can't believe we're back in Las Vegas, dude. I know, what a hole, huh? That really is, it's the worst. Welcome to my home. All right, all right, all right. Hey, Michael. Hey, Christopher. Did you notice something floating in the pool outside? It did look like something was clogging the jets. Yeah, I'm not sure if it was a giant turd or a dead hooker, but either could really be a possibility. But it's just, you know, it's a filthy place. It is, and there's a lot of filthy people crammed into a tiny, filthy space. All for CS. You know what? I would like to know exactly how filthy Vegas is. How exactly are we going to find out, though? Look at what I found in your bedside table, Christopher. <laughs> what is that? We have a whole variety of instruments and ways to quantify just how filthy Las Vegas is. So we're about to test my hotel room for any number of human excretions. Let's see what we can find. Well, you don't really need a black light to find the blood or ketchup, I'm hoping. It's like lipstick. Let's check out the couch. Oh, that is definitely something. And more. Just like clean up after yourself, man. Let's tell ourselves that's just toothpaste. I'm gonna be asking for an upgrade after this. <laughs> <laughs> We are here in the Las Vegas Convention Center where the CES plague is born and bred. So it's time to find out if this water is actually drinkable. So what are you using to, to make this happen? First, I've got this sweet belt clip. Nice reveal. Yeah. And this is a TDS meter. Basically what it does is it measures kind of the total dissolved solids of metals and minerals and other things in the water. The meter reads out 480. So according to the instructions, most tap water is 350 to 500. So we're like right, at the, we're right at the top of the yeah, scale. At, of like what your average is, more being worse. And we are here to test a, another water sample. Because we're nothing if not thorough. Maybe the last water fountain was a bad water fountain. So we're back here at the very sophisticated Engadget Water Testing Labs, aka our CS trailer in the parking lot of the LVCC. What I have here is the test that we're going to be running on the water that we got from the water fountain. Let's get started with the nitrate test first and foremost. So we've got to immerse this for just a pair of seconds. If there were any nitrates and nitrites, they're going to turn pink. Right now, not seeing much pink happening in the water. So we've got three strips here, three little pieces. One of those measures pH, one of them measures total hardness, and then the other one measures our chlorine levels. And I would say we're roughly around seven and a half on pH, 250 probably on the total hardness, and then basically no chlorine. Let's on to test for lead and pesticides, the real nasty stuff. Two dropperfuls of water. Now we've got to place both of these strips into the test vial. And apparently if the top line is darker than the bottom line, then we've got a positive test for lead and or pesticides. It looks like the bottom line is actually darker than the top, which is good for people drinking water in Vegas. That means we have no lead and no pesticides. Okay, so now it's time to check out what the pools are like here in Las Vegas. This little vial can test and see if there is E. coli in the pool behind me. And of course, there was a 2013 CDC study that said many swimmers actually end up leaving E. coli in the pool. So let's see just how filthy Vegas pools are. All right, so now we have to wait for 48 hours and we'll find out if we've got E. coli in the pool. Hello everyone, I am Michael Gorman, Editor-in-Chief of Engadget. Joining me on stage is Christopher Trout, our Executive Editor. Hello. And Mallory Johns, our social media superstar. Hi everyone. 
So, uh, just want to give you all a quick introduction. This is After Hours, where technology gets out into the streets. It's basically what we do when we're not in the office. And we'll just go ahead and jump in to the cliffhanger that y'all saw at the end of that. The good news is, because this vial, if you can see it, is a little purple, that means that there was no E. coli in the pool. Which so, also means there's no poop in the pool. Yes, which is good, right? Yeah. So it turns out that the water here at CES is, is clean. So lesson learned here. The only place that we're really in danger is in my hotel room on the couch. Yeah. So just never sleep. Stay out of your hotel rooms and you'll be fine. That's the <laughs> lesson that we've all learned from CES. Just never stop working, which is kind of what we do anyway. Truth. Um, you know, so... The reason that we kind of wanted to do this bit is because every year you come to see us and several people on staff seem to get sick. Well, I think that's just a general thing. It's not just an in-gadget thing, that's right? That's true. You've got a ton of people running around playing with gadgets, not necessarily washing their hands, as I saw somebody do in the bathroom earlier. Shame on you, whoever Gross. you were. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you, you, you just aren't keeping up with your hygiene maybe as well as you could have. No. There's too many people, too many unwashed masses touching lots of gadgets. But I think what we found is Las Vegas on the whole is a little bit cleaner than we'd expected. It so was. Bravo. I was surprised. Sin well City. done. Well done. LVCC and the hotels. Pools. The guys that are cleaning the pools are doing a good job too. At least during the winter months yeah. when nobody's swimming in them. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, I think I need a drink after that kind of filthy discussion. So what we've got here, just in case y'all don't know, up on stage there we have the Pico Brew, which is kind of like a Keurig for beer. And we've got a stout, I believe, and an IPA. So I'll let be us partake. That one. Mallory, you want a drink? Uh, of course I do. Get in there. Dig in. Cheers. 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 It's as good as it looks, guys. It is. It is even better, perhaps, than it looks. So... Since we have a first-timer on stage. Yes, this is my first time at CES and my first right. time in Las Vegas. <laughs> so how has CES been treating you thus far, Mallory? Well, you showed up sick, so you're, yeah. probably, you're probably one of the guilty parties making everybody else sick here. I was sick on my flight over, by the way. I had a fever, and I was sick for the per past two days. So. Which is why I'm sitting so You're the carrier. Right now. You're that's the one that starts like it. That's why everyone's quarantined and <laughs> Patient zero over here. <laughs> So is it everything that you expected? Um, I assume you're familiar with CES before you came to work for yes, us, right? Yes, I am. Yeah. CES is kind of a dream to me to really? be here and seeing all this tech. Yeah. It's and kind now? of mind-blowing. And now I'm just very exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> and and it's only right? day one. And, and recovering. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what's been, your, what's been the coolest thing that you've seen thus far? Uh, yesterday I went to the Intel keynote, which was kind of mind-boggling. I sat in the front row and I was live tweeting for Engadget, and AR Raman, who is a Slumdog Millionaire composer, came on the stage and demoed VR gestural music composition live. So how does that, does that work? What is VR so, gestural yeah. music composition? So that Intel like gave everyone in the audience these bands, and it, when you're just like typing in the air, musical sounds were emitted if that makes any sense. No, but I'll so, believe you. So different gestures make different notes? Is that what yes, we're talking about? Yes, exactly. And what was virtual reality about it? And there was also another segment where this girl was wearing VR and she was drawing with like VR on this musical, like beautiful, like mystical environment. Painting through the art of dance? Is that yes, what that was? Yes. Virtual painting, expressing yourself through the art of dance. I know Christopher's into that. Yeah, and he does it kind it of blew my mind after a few drinks. <laughs> yeah, because I'm a big like music junkie and audio nerd. So, okay. So, anything else that you've seen at CES that that blew your mind, or was um, that the main deal? At Unveiled, there was this great sleep aid called the Sleepion, and it's a three-in-one kind of sound soother for people with sleep disorders. And it actually emits smells and sounds to help you sleep. What sort of smells are we talking about? Um, aromatherapy. So like some like Cinnamon, lavender. Eucalyptus. Lavender. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good. Yeah. It would keep me asleep, I think. No. I doubt it. You're a night out. Just the drugs. Yeah. That's what just, keeps me asleep. <laughs> just the drugs. A martini and a couple of Valium. Mm. And I'm out cold. Yes. Okay. So 
Christopher, how has your day been today? Well, I got a little sick last night, probably due to sorry. Mallory and that couch. Mm -hmm. Sorry, uh, not sorry. I but did see her licking your keyboards and stuff. It was weird. How uh, dare so you? Seriously. <laughs> she, she, was, she was cackling as she I'm did. I'm a clean licks person, I swear. <laughs> Nobody licks my <laughs> keyboard but me. Uh, other than that, it's been a pretty good day. I've, I went and saw a couple of interesting things, and you and I are actually going to go see some virtual reality pornography later. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be, uh, that's definitely after hours for sure. But I saw, and we'll be talking about this a little bit more on tomorrow's after hours show, but I saw a clitoral stimulator that is not used for orgasm. It's How used to get you possible? aroused in the process to get up to a point where you're ready to have sex and then oh, okay. orgasm. No more okay. foreplay needed. They so call it for lazy. They call it before play, according to the women that I talked to. Oh, okay, that's and uh, trademark that. It's actually a really interesting device, and it's it's filling a sort of medical niche. It's not necessarily a sex toy. It's actually a an, a medical instrument of sorts. Oh, okay, um, but you know, it's a, a, a small wearable device, and it's legit. Awesome. Yeah. All right. I can dig it. Okay. Well, I mean, I think I've been asking enough questions here. Uh, Mallory, do we have any? We're hoping that the viewers at home, Mallory is currently periscoping yeah, right so now. Yeah, so if you are on Twitter, you can see our live periscope and join in and ask any questions that you would like about CES in Vegas, and we'll answer them live. Yes. The floor is yours, people of the internet. If you're lucky. Yeah. <laughs> So we had a couple great questions. Um, some of them pertain to VR. They okay. want to know what's next for VR. I mean, obviously, you just talked about this VR porn thing, but yeah. what else have you seen that's mind-blowing in the VR space? Well, I mean, it's early days for VR, I think. Yep. This is something that's sort of across the board, right? Like, we haven't really experienced the promise of VR yet. I think a lot of us have been able to see some of this stuff, but it hasn't yep. really reached mass market. You know, the New York Times put out a... a VR card, it was a Google Cardboard headset. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was the first big taste of VR for a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, obviously not the most sophisticated VR that people are going to see eventually, but, um, you know, I think there's a lot of, there are a lot of possibilities when it comes to sort of entertainment, obviously, pornography, regular, regular film, and gaming. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, you know, I think there's also some interesting sort of practical applications for, for medicine Mental health and that sort of thing. Yeah. And I think that stuff's really interesting. Yeah. Okay. As far as like the coolest thing that I'm that I have seen, I mean Oculus Rift is still the best VR experience that I've done uh, to date. Um, but there was a new company that just started a Kickstarter, I think today or yesterday, that's a full body haptic suit. Um, so I think that, that's Full one of... Full body VR? Yeah, so it's like one of the that's biggest... That's a lot of work, man. It, I don't right? know if I want to <laughs> strap on a suit every time I want to... Right, but... Be, be immersed. That's one of the big things with VR, right? It's an unanswered question. I think, you know, we're getting close on the headsets. Those are, that that technology's getting fairly refined. Um, but it's the input devices, and the rest of your senses still are not in that virtual world. It's very easy to put your eyesight and your ears in that world, audio, but um, the rest of you still needs to be fooled into a virtual space. And I think, I don't, I'm not saying I want a haptic suit, but that's an interesting thing to me if they can make it happen. You know, the idea is you put on the suit, it's got actuators all over it, so that way if you're playing a game uh, and you get shot, you feel it, or if you're running over Hill and Dale um, and, and it gets colder in the game and it's winter time, it makes your body feel colder or uh, warmer depending on what's happening on screen. So to me, that's really could be, that's where you're getting closer to the holodeck kind of reality where it feels like you really are in a virtual space. We're so, so far okay. away from that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I mean, it's a Kickstarter actually. right now, so that doesn't exist yet, but these people are saying they can make it happen, so that'll be very right, interesting. next question. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of the questions about Faraday Future and I their concept it. car. It's not drivable, and it sounds pretty out there, so we'll see what happens. But it's a Batmobile in real life. It, <laughs> it is. is. ugly as hell, though. It that is, thing is ugly. Beautiful, but beautiful. I don't know, I don't know. I mean, that's up to, that's up to uh, you know. To each his own. I know that one of our reporters was yeah. actually there, and he shot some amazing vines. If you go on the also, Gadget Vine account, you can see them. Yeah. Not a very practical car. Like, I understand it's a race car or whatever, but only one person fits in that thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, well, the thing is, is what they're showing off is the attention grabber, right? Like, a car like that is not built for regular roads. It, it seats one person. It's super long. But, you know, it's got this modular design, so they'll be able to make other types of cars from it. I think that's really the I want to see the minivan version. Yeah. 
That's okay, so I, I think we have time for one more question, Mallory. What do we got? Um, one be of the good. best questions that we had was, if you could take one new device from the show home with you, what would it be? I know what mine would be. I want, so LG has created this super tightly curved television screen. I want two of those put it together so I can stand in the middle and just be in a tube of television. Are you talking That's about their foldable prototype or? No, this one's else? just like, it's curved. It's, it, I mean, so it's foldable in that sense, but it's just built to be a really, instead of kind of a gentle curve like you've got on the desk right there, yeah. it's like a half circle. Okay. So you're like, you're surrounded by television. Apparently you can feel the heat coming off of the TV because if you stand inside of it to get it get inside the television. Wow. It doesn't really have any practical use. I just think it's ridiculous, and it would be fun to have a, a, a tube of television to stand in. Well, it's practical for, like, Netflix binge-watching sessions. There you go. Which I'm guilty of all yeah. the time. <laughs> I think I would take home this uh, remote control vibrator I saw yesterday. Of course or you would. That, or that Pico Brew, if I could have somebody program it for me. Uh, but, you know, you know where my mind is. So. Yeah. Yes. What about you, Mallory? I would take home Panasonic's Technics Revival because I'm also a big audio nerd and I do have a vinyl collection that's growing. And just the fact that I could have another turntable would be amazing. All right. Well, there you have it. Vibrators, tube televisions, and... Turntables. Yeah, turntables. No, lame. Okay, well, that's all we have. That's the end of day one here at CES for us anyway. The show floor is still open for a little while longer, but we're done for now, and we will see you all tomorrow. So thanks, and we'll see you then. And thank you, Internet, for your questions. <laughs>